Look, family, in the last year, year and a half, I'm about to tell you some things that you are not going to believe, but they're actually true and I have the receipts for it. Okay, so for one, I bought a portfolio of three properties. Also, we closed on a six unit um, deal in like in the French Quarter in Nor- New Orleans. I don't know if you've been in the French Quarter, but it's like prime real estate. It's a six unit. We're gutting it and uh, we're waiting on the permit so we can build it, but it's already gutted. Um, we closed on a 60 property um, deal. I mean, it's not a, it's not one building. It's literally, literally 60 houses over a few blocks in Louisiana. Um, also, we purchased some land that we're building up six stories. So we purchased the land. We got the schematics. We know what the building's going to look like, and I'm naming it after my last name so my family can drive by a building in Atlanta and see their father's last name and their last name. I say all that to say Terica did all that. I still don't know a whole lot about real estate, but I'm learning, okay? My sister, Terica Lynn Smith, which I give, like, I, I will promote her to no end because this is literally life-changing money that I'm encountering. It's This is like legacy money. I, I make content and make money if I can sell a product, sell a course, something like that. But when you have property, you can make money that's not attached to your personal brand. That is the beginning of wealth. So even if y'all cancel me, I'm still going to have bread. But listen, my sister Terica is going to be teaching you exactly what she did for me. This, These are real receipts. Everything I talked about. I know it sounds crazy. Like, there's no way I'm telling you I will show you the receipts, okay? When you see me in the streets, run up on and be like, yo, let me see y'all. Let me see the schematics in your building. We got it. I'm telling you, all the deeds, all that. Thepropertychallenge.com. I want you to go to thepropertychallenge.com because Terica is literally going to be teaching you all all the stuff she teaches me. And in fact, She's not one of those out personalities like that. She don't be wanting to do all that. And I said, listen, you have me acquiring property in a major way. And like, you got to teach other people. You got to teach my friends, the people that watch Social Proof Podcast that want to get in the game. And and we're coming up on a recession, y'all. And she says, this is going to be one of the biggest wealth transfers for the common person. And she is on a mission to teach all of us how to do it. That's why we're acquiring so much. But listen, go to thepropertychallenge.com. You do not want to miss this. She is going to be teaching you how to get the bag and how to build true wealth. All right? Thepropertychallenge.com. My official stamp. My co-sign, Tarek Lynn Smith. And then follow her on Instagram, female real estate guru. All right? Thepropertychallenge.com. Let's go. All right, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. I don't got to introduce my sister no more. I don't got to introduce you no more, right? Yeah. I want a full introduction. Yes, why not? Yeah, okay. All right, and I have a really good introduction. So, um... So today we have the female real estate guru, okay? And this is not just a cool Instagram name. Right. She literally is the most proficient real estate investor that I've ever met in my life. And the reason I'm telling you this is because she has amassed a huge, huge portfolio of properties, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of properties. And not only that, but she helped me. Uh, Am I at 100? You're I'm at 60. I thought she was over 100, though. Eight, no, hold on. 60, then we did the 20. Yes, we're over 100. Yeah, you're over 100. 16, then we did the 28. Mm-hmm. And then we got three, then we got mm-hmm. six. Mm-hmm. So I am in the... And 16, I'm, we're building. Let's not forget the Shans building. And That's a 16, lot of work. And 16, we're building yeah. 100%. What an event space. Oh, my gosh. And this space that I, we're in now. I am now in triple digits of properties. I know. And impressively... Five figures monthly yes. in real estate income. Mm-hmm. Passive. How does it feel? It feels amazing. How did you do that with me? Because I'm stubborn. No, you're not stubborn. You're not stubborn. <laughs> well, let me say, you, you're selective I'm with selective. your money. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, uh, I, I ain't always have it. So you know I, mean? I still got a little bit of poverty mindset sometimes. Like, hey, I got to keep this. Yeah. Um, but yes, so not only have you helped me get to uh, uh, three digits in properties, over 100 properties, you've helped multiple, multiple people. I can't even count how many people, but yeah. you've helped countless people become real estate investors, regular folk. How does that feel? Feels good. I'm happy they happy, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it feels good. It feels, um, I don't know. I don't really think about it like that. I think you're, this should be a part of everybody's lifestyle. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think like, oh, yeah, we did this. Like, I'm like, yo, you eating, and it feels good, and it's passive. And so it's like once you get that taste, you can't go back. Yeah. Like, you know, you got to keep on building that. For sure. We have Miss Terica Lynn Smith in the building. 
uh, just really stop by while, like your in transition came to Atlanta has a layover came here yep. hung out with me for a second That's then you're right. about to head right back out um, right. but when it comes to the word investor because you have an investor on your hat as a dope investor hat thank you when you hear the word investor what does that mean to you so um, I think uh, well I think for myself right I think everybody have their own definitions but for me it just means buying income Buying income. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anytime, anytime a word investor is mentioned, they're looking to buy income. That's the whole reason for becoming any type of investor, whether it's real estate, whether it's in stocks, whether it's in mergers and acquisitions, mm-hmm. um, whether it's in like whatever, it doesn't matter. An investor buys income. Mm. That's what they do. And I would imagine, so there's, there's, I guess, levels here, right? Because um, you can build streams of income mm-hmm. or you can buy streams of income. That's right. So you built some streams of income before yes. and you've bought streams of income. So tell yes. me about building a stream of income. Like you're a yeah. real estate agent. Like, tell me about that process. Yeah. So building a stream of income is, you know, obviously much more different than buying income because you got to put in a little bit more elbow grease than you would if you was just buying something that's already, you know, um, self-sustaining. So whenever I'm looking at, you know, building income, it's going to start from the ugliest pro- the ugliest property probably on the block. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you fi- start there and then you take some money and you fix it up. And if your goal is to hold it, then you look at the longevity of the deal to see how much it's going to take to, you know, fix it up and cash flow you. Um, And then from there, you allow that income to take care of you. So that's building in the simplest of forms. I'm trying to keep it elementary, too. Also, yeah, for sure. But also talk. um, You can talk to being a real estate agent mm-hmm. where you had to go get clients. What was that work like? Cause that was yeah, being a that's, stream. Yeah. That's like, um, <laughs> employee. Like that's what it's like <laughs> being an employee. So, um, to all of my realtors out there, make sure you're not just helping everybody else find their dream. You need to be investing in the dream as well. Um, that's just a disclaimer. I like to say that. Right. Right. So what does that mean? Right. Whenever I was a real estate agent, I thought I was going to be super rich. Like Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, I got my license. I worked hard. It took me forever to pass this real estate exam. And here I go. And then I'm thinking like everybody was just going to want to do business with me because I have this piece of paper. Like, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, da da da. Like, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) And nobody did. Like, Mm -hmm. nobody did. And so my first year, I made $5,000 in real estate. And I'm like, I could have went to McDonald's and made way much more money than this. Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> so my first year in real estate, I was less than minimum wage, but I didn't know anybody. I didn't know um, anything about um, finding a niche. I didn't have a real estate coach. The broker was not a coach. He was my pimp. So he just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like they'd be like, go out there and work, go out there and work and bring me back some commission. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? They don't got to do nothing. They supposed to teach, train, motivate, educate, all that, but they don't. Well, some do. Let me say Mm. some brokers do, not all. But um, the broker I had did not. He wanted a check. And so... Um, I remember buying this CD, and you know what a CD is. Yeah, you you and my age group. Yeah, uh, yeah but you know, I yeah, got a younger yeah. group. You got to <laughs> explain it, give the definition of what you had to do with the CD. <laughs> so um, back in the day, we had things that were called CDs, mm. and they're like these circle things that have um, voices on them, right. music or whatever. <laughs> I don't know how to describe right. a CD. And you put it into a machine, and it you can hear the people on it. <laughs> right. So I had bought this program. Um, it was like $12 and I didn't know if it was fraud or not, but it was like a um, CD um, by Todd Bates. I remember. And he was, um, he was talking in regards to um, comebacks and confidence and, you know, um, just, finding a niche lane and different things like that. And I would listen to that CD every single day. Well, the next year I went out and I became century 21 rookie of the year because Mm. I was, I smashed the game like that CD listening to it every day. It just changed my mindset. It gave me confidence because when I was a realtor, I would go and ask for business. Like I needed them, but the CD taught me, they need me. It's like going to a doctor, right? Mm. You, you need the doctor. Well, I'm the real estate doctor. So they need me. And so I built that confidence up. And then from there, I um, 
I found my niche with investors. Um, I stopped focusing on sellers and buyers and I went solely after real estate investors. And I mean, I worked for free until I, it paid off and one rich person knows another rich person. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's how my business grew. I love it. And there's nothing wrong with building streams of income, y'all. And I mm -hmm. encourage it. Mm -hmm. Build a stream of income. But there's a whole nother conversation that I like to have right now. Okay. Called buying mm -hmm. income, mm -hmm. which is going to be foreign to a lot of people. Right. Um, so give me an example of buying income. I'll give you an example with the deal we just did. Mm -hmm. I always like to talk about that one. It's the easiest to break up. And to be honest, it's the freshest on my mind. And so with that one, I knew looking at the contract that we were getting from HUD, it was going to be right at a half a million dollars a year in income that they would be paying us. So okay. if I buy this building, this building performing at 90 to 95 percent occupancy is going to yield us about a half a million dollars in um income each year, gross income. That's gross. Got it. And so it was a no brainer because, you know, the entry to buy in, of course, you got to make sure the numbers make sense, mm -hmm. but the entry to buy in and the ROIs at 28 to 30%, you know, is unheard of in this market. 28 to 30%. What do you mean? So return on investments. Mm -hmm. Explain that. So what we look at is we look at the um, cash flow projection. We look at, you know, if we had debt services such as a mortgage and, you know, of course, we got insurance and taxes and things like that. Well, once we look at the final number, the net operating income, then we're able to calculate what the ROI is going to be. So if you're if your ROI is 28 percent. It'll be, let's say you had $100,000, your return on investment would be 28% of that. Gotcha. 28% period or 28% per year? No, per year. Hmm. Per year annually. And that's interesting. So if like it's a $100,000 property, right? And mm -hmm. let's just say it's going to yield 28%. Mm -hmm. That means at the end of the year, that $100,000, let's say for instance, it costs you a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and I I, I want to get this right. Let's say it costs a hundred thousand, but you don't necessarily invest a hundred thousand dollars. You might have to put down twenty thousand, twenty percent. Correct. About right. Okay. Yes. Not on this particular. Deal. Not on this deal. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Right. Just just as an example for round numbers. Yes. If the ROI on that hundred thousand dollar property is twenty eight percent, that means I would have made. $28,000 for that year in that property. Correct. However, I only put down 20,000 to acquire it. Mm -hmm. So the percentage is based on the value of the house, not necessarily what I invested up front. So it's, it's based on, um, so there's two different approaches here, right? So if we're looking at buy and hold, yep. yes, that makes sense. Yes. Explain it. Okay. So for instance, when we're calculating, you know, um, our cap rates and our ROIs on our multifamily, we're looking at it um, from a very long perspective amount of time. So mm -hmm. anywhere from five, 10, 15 years, if you're looking at a flip, that ROI is just, you know, that one time and mm -hmm. then it's over with. Sure. So you'll make 20, let's just say your return on investment you know, um, is 28,000 on a flip. That's it. But on multifamily, it's 28,000 every year that you keep it. Plus the equity that continues to build up. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. So in this scenario mm -hmm. at 28% mm -hmm. for a hundred thousand dollar property, I invest 20,000 to acquire the property. And it just in this particular scenario. Okay you would calculate 28% ROI per year based on a hundred thousand dollar property. If that property produced $28,000 for the year. No. So you're going to confuse the audience. Okay. Dave. Yeah. That, that, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to understand because okay. once I do, they yeah. will. Yeah. All right. So let's just do the um, hundred thousand and let's just break it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we teach you a 70% rule, right? Meaning you have to be all in on a flip 
R a B R R R R, right? Um, the that? Burr effect. That's when you buy, you renovate it, you refinance, you re, um, you refinance, you rent, and then you repeat. Okay. okay, that's the Burr method. On those two methods, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars, seventy thousand dollars is the maximum that you should be into that deal. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Your acquisition and your repairs mm -hmm. have to come to $70,000. It cannot exceed it. And then you would have a remaining of 30,000, which is what the investor would consider the return on that investment. So on that $100,000 investment, you know, the um, ROI on that one would be roughly about 30%. I see. So you're not even going to buy it for anything more than 70% of its value. Correct. Got it. For Yes, for this deal. So we have to keep the equity in the property. So a lot of people get confused. They like, well, how do you come up with the 70000 Well, the bank is going to look at the whole loan, right? We're doing a 70-30 formula. That's a second step. The first step is the $100,000. You go to the bank. They say you need to give us 20% down. So you have to come up with $20,000 of that $100,000, yeah, okay? But you still have to follow the 70% rule. Okay. So that $20,000 is inclusive of that $70,000. That makes mm -hmm. sense? Yes. So no matter what, you cannot go over $70,000 in that deal. Got it, okay? Let me just try to mm -hmm. make sure I'm, I'm on, the, on the right page. Property costs $100,000. Mm -hmm. Or it's it's valued at a hundred thousand after repairs and everything. It's Correct. Valued at a hundred thousand. Tarek is saying she's not going to buy that property for any more than seventy thousand. Correct. So the bank is still valuing it at a hundred, mm -hmm. but you're not going to buy it for anything more than seventy. No, not buy it. I will not spend more than 70 with acquisition and repairs. Gotcha. So, so my MAO, which is your maximum allowable offer, mm -hmm. let's just say if um it needs $20,000 worth of repairs. You're only going to offer 50. I'm only going to offer max. 50. Max. Max. Got it. So that the is the beginning of acquiring a good deal. That's like, yes. the, that's like the basis foundation of acquiring a good yes, deal. Okay. Absolutely. That's good. And that's so, an easy deal. That's not right. a more complex deal. We deal with some very complex deals mm -hmm. with these larger um, portfolios. But this is like the elementary level of it. It's super gotcha. easy. And a lot of people try to defer from these numbers. A lot of people say, yo, in my market, these numbers don't work. Well, it means the deal don't work. So that formula works across the board. Like there's Everywhere. no, if it does, even in New York, like if yes. it's New York, you're still just not going to do it That's until right. you find a good deal. That's right. But and there are investors in whatever market that someone is that lives by this rule, right? Yes, correct. Yes. And there's Got some it. who don't follow the rule and they get haircuts. And there's some <laughs> who's more riskier than others. Some may be like, yo, you know, um, I'm going to do 80-20. Well, they're more risky, right? Mm -hmm. um, me, personally, 730 is the standard. I do 60-40. So I turn down a whole lot more deals than I invest So in. you even turn down those 70 percenters. That's right. That's right. Because I guess for me, when I was new, as a new investor, I would eat everything. Right. But now as an experienced investor, I understand how much time it takes to put into some of these deals. And I'm always saying, OK, do I have this amount of time to turn over this property? Yes or no. You know, one property can probably bring me one hundred thousand dollars in investment income. But I may lose a few hundred thousand dollars because the amount of time it takes me to do that. Mm. So I have to evaluate those deals according to that base as well. That's good. All right. So this is actually making uh, even more sense. So let's say, for instance, still on this hundred thousand dollar property mm -hmm. and we can get, you know, fixed up and everything. We can get what, fifteen hundred because we spent mm -hmm. what I spent in uh, Louisiana, 70 something thousand. Mm -hmm. And it comes out to fifteen hundred dollars a month. Mm hmm. So let's just say a thousand, a hundred thousand dollar property. Let's just say you can rent it out and make fifteen hundred dollars a month. If we're not buying the property for more than sixty thousand in your mm -hmm. case, um, you would only need a loan for sixty thousand. The banks give loans for sixty thousand dollars. Yes, they, they do. do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but at max, they're only going to require twenty percent down, right? Yeah, and so if it's 
but so keep in mind, depending on the amount of repairs, you want to you want to buy and finance the repairs together. For sure, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm calculating yeah. all that in that mm -hmm. particular sixty thousand or seventy thousand. Let's yes. just say seventy thousand because right. that's what we've that's been talking the, about. Yeah. So the it's going to be fifty thousand dollars to acquire the property, seventy twenty thousand dollars in repair. You get all of that from the bank, right? So you well, want a loan for seventy thousand. Twenty percent of the seventy. Right. Okay, but they're calculating at seventy thousand, mm -hmm. but you are going to have to put down. Fourteen thousand mm -hmm. to acquire that property. That's right. That's it. But it's going to be it. worth a hundred thousand. So you're going to have thirty thousand in equity, and or if you sell it, you get thirty thousand dollars in cash yes. minus a few expenses, of course. Got it. So I want to I want to do some quick math real quick. Okay. So if we have a loan for seventy thousand dollars, we're going to have to put down uh, uh, fourteen thousand, mm -hmm. right? But if you rent it out for fifteen hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. times 12, twelve months, that's eighteen thousand. That's correct. So potentially, that first year, you get your money back and some, right. and then it cash flows you for the rest of your life. Correct. Along with the equity continuing to appreciate. Let's not forget appreciation, and let's not forget, you know, all of the other benefits that comes with owning that investment property, such as all the write-offs that comes with it. What are some of the write-offs? Um, so like you can write off interest, you know, with the banks, mm. you know, um, you can write all, you know, maintenance and different things like that expenses you may have. Um, you know, you get um, tax breaks for like your insurance and all of those different type of things you pay for the property. So, mm. I mean, it's really good. I like it. So, OK, so this is no one ever really explained to me um, this this process before you. And I was only looking at, okay, $100,000 property, I got a loan for $70,000, I'm going to make $1,500 a month. And it just wasn't... Um, attractive. It wasn't as attractive, because <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, how many t-shirts can I sell to make $1,500? Mm -hmm. I'll just make it, right? Mm -hmm. But then I realized I got to keep making that money, right? Mm -hmm. And um, But the cool thing is, like, literally after your first, you know, few months or first year, you've created an asset that will pay you for the rest of your life. Absolutely. And you started with one, right? Yes. I started with one ugly house, $5,000, my right. tax return. And how many you got now? It's over 500. Over 500. Yeah. yeah. I sold amazing? a few this year, but yeah, I'm still you sold a few. There. Yeah. I had to sell a few. Why? I had to get rid of a partner. <laughs> explain that, explain that, explain that, explain that. What do you mean? So, you know, um, I mean, Whenever I first started building my portfolio, um, I, I, like I said, I work with a lot of investors. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of um, our investments, we have, you know, um, JV agreement, joint venture agreements, where we both own the asset. Sometimes partners go through things personally that distracts them from, you know, what you initially started off together and agreed upon. And I'm one who believes you don't just sit at a table and eat. Like, you don't just do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to you have to carry your weight yeah. and um, you have to do your part, you yeah. know, um, because, you know, it gets to a point where you doing everything and they're just eating everything. And it's like, yeah. yo, this is not we're not equally yoked no more. Like, not we can't sure. do that. And so um, aside from, you know, just other things. Why did you initially go into that particular JV? So this was a part of my early days in real estate whenever I was like, I didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was like, if I'm going to do 50% of the work and you putting up the money, then I don't mind. Right. Well, now it's to the point where, you know, there's some things in a deal where it requires the other partner. Right. right? Like, let's say we want to, you know, refinance and be able to do some other stuff. And this person got like a lot of financial stuff going on. Well, you're the money person. So I don't want to have to go refinance it by myself because at this point I don't need you as a partner. Yeah. Like you're not going to still eat and you can't carry your weight. Now, if you don't take care of your private business and it start affecting our business, mm -hmm. then we have a problem. Got you know it. what I'm saying? So as your partner, I, I commit to making sure that I remain credit worthy. Um, I work with integrity, you know, um, I'm honest. I make sure that I'm transparent. You know, all of the books are open. Like there's no hidden agenda with me. And um, your part is to make sure that you're fundable, make sure banks want to give you money. And if the banks can't give you money, there's no reason for you to keep sitting at the table to eat. Like, gotcha. let me buy you out and or let's just sell the asset as a whole. And that's what happened. Mm. 
Okay. How, was it a lot of them? No, not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, you know, not too bad. All right, man. You do a lot of JV stuff. I do. Though, so, uh, mm-hmm. I think um, some of it is just uh, out of the kindness of your heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like Franklin. <laughs> like Franklin. Yeah. Yo, first of all, I said that though. Okay. And we're going to talk about it. So Terica, Terica calls and I still got the text. She was mm-hmm. so excited. And again, I didn't understand why she was so excited. She's like, oh my gosh, this is mm-hmm. a deal of a lifetime. I said. The best deal still right. of my 18 years in the game. I still, my attorney is upset at me about this deal. Mm-hmm. Our other attorney tried to buy the deal. Right. And we've had since then three other offers. That's how sweet of a deal this is. Dang. Well, look, T, she's like, yo, we got this deal. Mm-hmm. And it's so amazing. It was, yeah. how much did they want for it? 600. No, they wanted a million. They wanted a million dollars. I, you know, I wouldn't have even thought to offer them <laughs> like 60% of what they, they wanted. Well, I started right? at 500. You started at 500 yeah. and I think, I think you said, yo, it's actually worth a million. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he was like, yo, if, if they don't take the 600,000, we'll pay more. But yeah. that's right. I was willing to pay as I was willing to get the deal because even at a million, the numbers made sense. Yeah. And you know what? Mm-hmm. The, you said it was like their brother or something like that has, a, has another, it was like another 30 units yeah, or the something. Mom. Mm-hmm. mom had like another 30 units. And she said, uh, I think you said we were going to pay like a million for that. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, why are we paying a million dollars? Why are we paying double part, yeah. for half the property? Mm-hmm. And that's when I realized how good of a deal this was. Oh, yeah. Definitely a good deal. I mean, the bank said, here's $2 million with no problem. Like, they were ready. Yeah. Like, we wanted to look at refinancing. I mean, yeah. they have no issue with it. Like, it's just a good deal. Like, it's never been that easy to get that. They didn't send us through no red tape. Yeah. Like not. In fact, they calling us to follow up to be like, "Yo, you still want to? You want to refinance the deal? Let us give you some money on this." I'm like, yeah, not right now. I want to talk about that too. Mm-hmm. But uh, oh, so let me let me just uh, finish the <laughs> story. So at, around this time, I think we did. I start. We started like either the first or second property challenge. Was it the first one? Like right after the first one, I believe. Yeah. Or second, something like Gosh, that. I don't remember. So. Let me just explain it. Terica runs the property challenge. Go to thepropertychallenge.com right now and make sure you get uh, on the waiting list. But um, so th- th- I think we come up with the $600,000. And I know that, all right, Terica got 200000 Derek got two hundred, and she calling me. So I'm like, I could put up my little 200000 and we good because mm-hmm. yeah. he started running through the numbers. And Terica's like, no. And like, what do you mean? She said, no, you could put up a little bit. I put up a little bit. But the people that are in my inner circle, we want them to invest so they too can be owners of 60 units. That's right. And I'm like, <laughs> why don't we just give us like some, you know, like some little yeah. one-offs to yeah. you know, help out with some, the 60 units. And she's like, I'm like, yo, we have the money. Like we yeah. just do it. And Sarah was like, I, I understand it. But in terms of a legacy play, and mm-hmm. I think this really solidifies you above anyone else in the real estate space mm-hmm. because no one's giving people their return. Even in like crowdfunding scenarios, yeah. like you're not, nobody's like, nobody's going to do this. Yeah. And the people who are actually uh, doing like crowdfunding don't even have as many personal properties as you. Right. You know what I mean? Now, I right. see a, a bunch of people that do real estate stuff. Right. But literally none of them have the receipts you have. Right. And you're good at teaching. And you're like, and I have a, and you have a good heart. Yeah. Like it's like, all right, well, if my if we gonna eat, we all gonna eat. The people who decide to join the inner circle. Mm-hmm. So um we now had what was it? Actually, I could look at it right now because mm-hmm. uh it got my distribution on there. <laughs> <laughs> let me show y'all my distribution. I'm not gonna show y'all my distribution, but let me show y'all real qu- or tell y'all real quick. So we have um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people, including myself, Terica. Where is Derek on here somewhere? Yeah, me and Derek on there. So you and TLS. You- TLS. Oh, so in mm-hmm. in Terica Lynn Smith, that's you and Derek. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that's lit. And mm-hmm. we all got the mm-hmm. top one, so mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah. Anyway, um. Yeah. 
I'm about to tell you something you're probably not going to believe. This is David Shands, okay? And I'm like, y'all know me. Y'all listen to this podcast. You enjoy the podcast. You trust me. I'm about to tell you something you could trust in. I built a 71-unit portfolio, 71 doors of real estate in less than a year and a half. And all because my sister, Terrica Lynn Smith, who I am stamping, co-signing, I can sing praises all day about her because this is happening in my real life. She showed me exactly what to do to build this portfolio. We just closed on 60 units and not even like a one building, it's 60 houses over a few blocks in Louisiana. We purchased it, closed on it, fixing it up, and not even, yo, the, the people don't even have to pay rent for us to get paid. She got a HUD contract and the government actually pays for the units, even if it's occupied. It's crazy. Listen, go to thepropertychallenge.com. There's some things coming coming up in the world through this, uh, this, this recession, but this is going to be the biggest wealth transfer. She's telling me to save my cash, to learn this game, because in a few months, the game is going to change. And this is going to be where people build generational wealth. Listen, go to thepropertychallenge.com. She's going to be doing a five-day challenge, teaching you exactly what she's been teaching me and now hundreds of other people on how to build generational wealth through real estate, okay? I've had a lot of people on this podcast, but no one's changed my life the way she has, okay? Go to thepropertychallenge.com. Get your VIP ticket. You do not want to miss this, all right? The propertychallenge.com. Let's go. Yeah, so <laughs> in, in, a, in amongst this group of people, in those groups of people that put up like 50,000 or whatever, there's like some of them where it's like a bunch of partners mm -hmm. that came up to the table with that, right? Explain that. Yeah, so what happened is um, there's what, six or seven main investors. And then those main investors, if they had to come up with like $100,000, they went to their friends, their, the other investors, in, I guess, in the group. And they said, okay, this 100000 you know, we just need 10 people at $10,000 or something like that. And then they created their own entity. Got it. And then the person who, you know, sits at the table is what we call a POC, the point of contact. Mm -hmm for that entity and they the ones who deal with it. We don't have dealings with the entire downline of the people that's invested. We only have the um the dealings with the PLC, the point of contact. Got it. Got yes. it. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. So this first uh distribution, I think it's like close to uh 10% or oh 8% of in three months. So three just months. keep in mind. So July, August, um, September so we didn't start, we started collecting payments in August, I believe. So August, September, October, and November. So it'll be four months, right? Um, because December doesn't count as a payout month because right. you receive it in December. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think total, what is the total amount we're, we're paying out on this investment? The collectively? total amount is $116,031.42. Yes. yes. So the investors get back 116000 um, over that principal, which is unheard of right now yeah, in that sure. short amount of time. You know, um, the beautiful thing about that is that's quarterly. So you'll continue getting those payments because we collect, we collect, we collect, and then we cut quarterly. So you'll continue getting these for the next 20 years. Mm. All because people decide to join your inner circle. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I want to ask this because I, I want to talk about this. The, um, uh, the bank wants to give you money, mm -hmm. right? And original plan says that we're, we're going to refinance with the bank, take yeah. their cash, put out, take out a loan, and then, you know, we'll just pay the loan back, which is cool because... It was the Burr method. Yes, mm -hmm. the Burr method, yes. which was, hold on, let me let me see if I can remember. Buy, rehab. You renovate, yep. So buy, renovate, refinance. Mm-hmm. Rent and repeat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, so, uh, but there was a reason you didn't want to take the money just yet. Right. So what um, <clears throat> I think what's important is, you know, understanding investing as a whole. If you're looking for instant gratification, the inexperienced investor would have said, give me the money. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Two million dollars is nothing to just turn your nose up at. Yeah. Right. Um, and obviously we wanted to do that because of the simple fact that's what the original plan was. So what 
the audience have to understand is we bought this property for six hundred thousand. Um, we put we um, did like four to five hundred thousand in renovations. I think we're all in at one point one million. Mm-hmm. Our appraisal came back without HUD comps at three point two million. Mm. So in six months, we turned one million into three million. That's a two hundred percent return in equity already. Right. We have no debt. Um, and the property right now brings in right at, um, you know, 30 to 40 grand a month, depending on, you know, vacancies. Mm-hmm. So with that, you take all of that success, you go to the bank and you say, hey, I want to refinance this. They say, do you have any debt? You say, absolutely none. How, um, what's your occupancy? We're at 90 percent. Okay, great. We want to do this deal. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the process, they approved us very quickly. Yeah. Right. So then. They say, whenever you take on bank debt, you got to take on bank obligations, right, and requirements. So as a investor who owns something free and clear, you don't have the same requirements as someone who's going to get a lien holder um, on their property, which is a bank, right? And so the bank was like, look, we want for you to get flood insurance on this property. We like, but the property never flooded. They say, we don't care. It's in a flood zone. We want you to get flood insurance. We're like, all right, bet. Now, mind you, I already knew that, you know, we would need flood insurance going to the bank. But what a lot of people don't know is insurance is regulated by politics. So because we're in a different politics season right now, insurance is not at the forefront of our state representatives right now. Maybe it is. I don't feel it, though. Right. And so what that looks like is, you know, um, FEMA came out with the new 2.0, which we're going to. That's another conversation. Don't get me started. But what it looks like is for us to insure this property, we would have to pay two hundred thousand dollars a year in flood insurance for a property that never flooded Mm. because the bank requires flood insurance because they're regulated by the federal government, which is FEMA. And if they was to get an audit and not have a flood policy in place on a property that they financed and gave money for, then they would be hit with fines. That's cool and dandy for them, right? So when we found this out, we like, yo, that is a lot of money. Well, guess what? Come next year, we receive notices because when you own something, they have to inform you. They informed us that the state of Louisiana insurance rates are going to increase for businesses 63%. What? 63%. So that's a haircut for Golly. us. So you mean to tell me just in flood insurance alone, that takes up more than 50 to 60% of our gross income. That don't even count our payroll, our maintenance, you know, bookkeeping, marketing. It includes none of that. You mean off the bat, I'm going to be two to $300,000 just in insurance. Mm. And then by the time we, you know, add on the debt from the bank, you know, um, the property became negative, negative, um, cash flow positive, negative cash flow, meaning we were negative 15% on our investment, mm. meaning we would be making cash calls every single month. If we was to take that $2 million cash that the bank was going to give us. So we said, yo, we're not going to refinance it. We're not in a position where we need the $2 million. Yeah. We just wanted to get back a hundred percent return and do all this other fun stuff. But guess what? Politics change all the time. It's not to say we won't ever do it, but right now this is not the season to do it. And mm-hmm. so, you know, um, that's how we did it. Yeah. I, th- I think it's really, really, um, it's important to be working with somebody who understands it because I mean, you would think, okay, well, the property has $2 million worth of equity in it. Oh, 200000 a year, no problem. Oh, insurance going to go up a little bit, no problem. But until you understand the numbers, you might find out you're in a bad situation. Mm-hmm. I, one, I didn't know if all of that happened, we'd be negative. <laughs> Guys, well, that's stupid. Yeah. But um, so along with insurance going up 63%, why is it? Politics. Politics. That's all I can say right now. Politics. So in Louisiana, we had um, this past hurricane season, we did not have any hurricanes. So we're hoping insurance providers come back to the state of Louisiana. And if anybody's out there who owns insurance companies and want to come to the state of Louisiana, we will welcome you. (laughs) And I will guarantee you good business if you have great rates. Um, 
But right now, no insurance company want to be out there because it's it's high risk. So we have to deal with the local um, insurance companies, which say, yo, we supposed to be last resort. We ain't supposed to be your first resort. Right, right. <laughs> so they're like, we're going to tax you on that. Right. So investors be like, well, you probably shouldn't buy. No, you can self-insure. I mean, we used to do that all the time in, in my early stage of investment, right? Mm-hmm. What does self-insure mean? Meaning the same money you pay the insurance company that you would be forced to pay, you can allocate a fraction of that into a whole entire um, insurance account. And if there's something that ever happens, you go pay to handle the repairs of the property. Yeah, for sure. We have three construction companies. Why not just insure it ourselves? Yeah. So That's smart. Yeah. That's smart. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, first off, if you really, really are serious about getting into real estate and you just you haven't been able to trust any of these uh, these social media uh, real estate gurus, <laughs> um, make sure you join the property challenge because um, literally uh, changing my entire financial life, but also my perspective on how money really, really works. Yeah. I I just got so excited because we just start, started talking about it yesterday of how. I could have a six figure year passively. Mm-hmm. Meaning if I have a six figure year passively, if I ever get canceled or mm-hmm. I'm ever in a position where I can't work or my health, something happens or I, I can't go perform, I can't do these podcasts. My family will still be taken care of. Absolutely. I can live off a hundred thousand dollars a year. You got my family. Absolutely. I mean, we can't, I'm not adding shrimp to every pasta, but yeah, you know, <laughs> We Life still, is good. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> we can just sit in the house, right? Yeah. It's like retirement. Ooh, it's retirement money now. Mm. Mm. I told you I could have retired yesterday. <laughs> you could have retired two years ago. Yeah. Um, yo, but here's another thing I wanted to um I wanted to talk about. So for a beginning investor, somebody, that, what do you need to start investing? To just to start the mindset. To know that you can be an investor. I think a lot of people disqualify themselves because, you know, when you're not in a room where people having like minded conversations and are you actually seeing someone do it, you think that is out of reach. And I hear that a lot from everybody that comes through the property challenge like, yo, I never thought I can be an investor. Well, if someone that, you know, was a teenage mom who was homeless, who was in foster care, I mean, every adversity you can possibly go through in life. If I can do it, I feel like anybody can do it. Like it ain't rocket science. I feel like real estate is one of the easiest industries to become a millionaire in. And there's no requirements other than knowledge. Let me ask you this. Becoming a real estate millionaire, how is that described? What do you mean? So in the digital space, to be a millionaire, mm-hmm. I have to have a million dollars. You know what I mean? Not even mm-hmm. if I make a million dollars in sales, if I don't have the million, I'm not a millionaire. Like you have to do it through assets. But what does it look like to be a millionaire in real estate, definition wise? So I would say you have, you know, a million dollar portfolio, mm-hmm. you know, um, because that's what the bank is going to look at. That's how they're going to categorize you. Right. They're not going to be like, oh, you're a hundred thousand there. You know, if you got, you know, four or five properties um, with a value of a million dollars, you 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 have a million dollar portfolio. Like you get what I'm saying? But is it based off of the equity? Absolutely. The OK, so a million dollars worth money. of equity. No, not just. So I would say a value like um, and that includes the equity, but not just the equity, the whole entire value piece of it. Right. Mm. Um, And what does that mean? You can have a hundred you can buy a property for one hundred thousand dollars and have fifty thousand dollars worth of equity. So if you just send off of equity, that's just fifty thousand. No, it's one hundred and fifty thousand, you know, so one hundred and fifty. Yeah, because it's worth one hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, you said a property is worth one hundred fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. You have fifty in equity, but you put out a hundred. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. if, okay, gotcha, 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 mm-hmm. gotcha, gotcha. So if I had, I don't know, five pro, okay, but it doesn't seem like if I have five properties mm-hmm. that all are worth two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, but I owe two hundred thousand dollars on each property, mm-hmm. doesn't seem like I'd be a millionaire. Yeah, because you're not counting equity. So, because there isn't any equity in that right, particular Right. You said scenario. they're worth it. Right. That's right, all you right. said. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, so it's like, like you have 
ARV after repair value, mm-hmm. right? That's taken into consideration. If you buy a property for two hundred thousand dollars, you shouldn't owe two hundred thousand dollars. Unless you're not in the property challenge. Yeah, right. <laughs> Unless and, you have and not following any formulas. Right, right. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, but you do take out your debts and different things like that. So I don't want people to be confused. Um, but to, when they look at your portfolio. They're going to look at if you have income that is paying the notes on these, they're not, they're going to consider that good debt. Mm, like you get what I'm saying. Right. So all of that still counts towards your bottom line. So you can easily build a million dollar um, real estate portfolio. In fact, that's really not hard at all to build. Um, do it mean you make a million dollars? Absolutely not. Right. But that's your assets. That's your that's your value that the bank is placing upon you. And they I promise you they will give you that value. They will not. You know, be like, oh, you owe this amount. So, no, they're going to be like, no, this property is worth about 300000 Now, they will calculate your monthly debt. But if you have a, you know, a property where it is tenant occupied, then it becomes income that they're counting as well. Got it. How long does it take typically for a property to double in value? (sighs) That's a great question. And it depends on appreciation. Um, I guess there's no real answer to that, like no and formula, inflation. Right? No, not not necessarily a formula, but I'll tell you this: it's based upon how you buy. Mm. So, for instance, um, if we, you know, take a property that you know is flipped, and then by the time we finish flipping it, it we doubled the property value. Mm-hmm. Like that makes sense. Like yeah. you can double it that way. Um, if you waiting on appreciation through appreciation, depending on how much property appreciate, let's just say we're at, you know, Google it. What? And I'm just going to Google it. Like what, what does the internet say about how long it takes? Not how long it takes. It's like five to 7% in appreciation. Okay. See what that is right now. A year. I think it's like 5% to 7% a year. Appreciation Mm -hmm. rates. Okay. Real estate appreciation rate. Um, total appreciation is 7.35 percent. See, I hit last right quarter. Yeah, so the last matter. 12 months is 25 percent. Last two years, 42 percent. Last five years, 69 percent. That's collectively, right? Yeah, from okay. two well, from 2017, from 2017 quarter two 2017 to 2022 quarter two, real estate has appreciated in America. Seventy percent. Yeah, that's collectively. Okay, got to be. <laughs> Since nineteen ninety one, the average annual home price increase has been four point three percent, according to FDFHFA. Mm-hmm. Since two thousand, the average rate has been four point seven percent, and since mm-hmm. two thousand twelve, the average rate has been seven point seven percent. So I was right on. So five to seven percent. Yeah. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So. Funny thing is, though, if you just Google a year, you're going to get a crazy number like Google 2020 or 2021 where interest rates were ridiculous low. Oh, yeah, it'll be it'll be a whole nother. It'll be skyrocketed up. Right. So, um, again, I pay attention to the history of real estate. I don't just pay attention to the market we in right now. Gotcha. So that's what's up. What's your what's your plans for the times that we're in right now? And, you know, after kind of post post night vid 19 situation and um, kind of in the recession space, what are your goals? I'm diversifying my portfolio, meaning um, becoming international. Right. You know, um, becoming more smarter and wiser with the way that I invest, where I invest, um, how I invest. Um and actually transitioning out of the actual labor part of it and going more into the bank part of it. So, um, oh, you're going to be the bank. Yes. Yeah. So we become the lender. Yeah. So like right now we're evaluating a deal for someone where they're looking for 60,000. So, you know, um, I have quite a bit of liquid and it's my money. So I'm not regulated, you know, by, you know, the mortgage board or whatever, because I can loan my money to whoever I want. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I find that I still have, you know, first lien position just as a bank would, right. Mm-hmm. The bank comes in, they have first lien position um, and they will hold that property until you pay off that entire loan for 15, 20 or 30 years. 
well, I'm just going to be in the same position. You know, we give $60,000, you pay us back seven, eight percent, you know, um, over a period of time. And um, we still own that same amount of doors as that same person own. Mm. So I'm I, I just realized and I, I always forget about it. I'm the bank yeah. on this one. Pro- so I, I a friend came to me and I obviously I called Terrica just to uh, to get her advice. Yeah. I was like this is it's two plots of land mm-hmm. and he wants to sell them for a hundred thousand dollars, but he wants to develop them. So he mm-hmm. started getting the plans and all that kind of stuff already. But he's like, yo, I need you to buy it for a hundred thousand, buy the land. And mm-hmm. I said it to Sarah because she's like, all right, well, if the land makes sense, we're good. You can buy it. So I'll buy it for a hundred thousand, but we have an agreement mm-hmm. that in six months he'll buy it back for 125,000. Correct. So I'm the bank. You the bank. That's right. You loan your money out and it's doing good for you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The be- Okay. Hey, listen, man, if y'all got a really, really good deal, <laughs> hit us up. I, yeah. I got a couple dollars <laughs> for you. Nothing crazy. If it's over $100,000, hit Terrico. Okay. But if, <laughs> if you need like a couple of, oh, let me ask you this. So let's say, for instance, somebody wants to buy a property for $200,000. Mm-hmm. And the bank is, let's say the property's worth, I don't know, 300000 Mm-hmm. They can acquire this property for two hundred thousand. So obviously, they want to make this deal happen, mm-hmm. but they don't have the twenty percent that they need to put down on the property. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that deal. Why? Because I would be second lien position. Because they go into a bank to give them that twenty percent that they don't have, that put the bank in first lien position. So what happens is, if that person default, the bank get paid first, and then I get paid second. But. The bank, would a bank get paid? Will you not get paid if the bank is paid? Or do you get paid when the bank is paid? No. So what happens is, so I always look at worst case scenario, right? So if that person foreclosed on a property, the judge is going to say, okay, who are the lien holders? All right. What positions are they in? The federal government supersedes everybody, Mm -hmm. right? So if they have, you know, back taxes or whatever, they're going to take the money from there first. Then the the next person up is usually the bank. The bank say, oh, they owe us all this plus court costs, plus attorney fees, plus all this money they done put out to get the property back from this person who didn't default it. Then the third person would be me because I just put up the down payment. So where does this payoff come from if the person forecloses it? So the um, so what happens is whenever you get a loan, there's a mortgage insurance that you can get where the banks can, you know, they use it as protection. Right. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the times it falls up under there, but if the property itself doesn't like fall up under that category, then that's when foreclosure take place and the proceeds are divvied up based according to the proceeds of whatever's left over. Well, what so, proceeds? right. The house sale. Mm-hmm. What, where do you think foreclosures come from? Foreclosure. Somebody yeah. buys the, somebody buys a house for a lower number. That's right. So let's say, all right, this is a perfect story, okay? Like, we're going to chop this up. So let's just say this person said the property was $100,000, but they needed us to give them $20,000 because that's 20% of the down payment. Mm -hmm. And they go to the bank, and the bank said, congratulations, here is the money, right? Boom. That person foreclosed on it. I mean, that person defaults on the payments. The bank said, you know what? You're behind on payments. And, you know, interest, it accumulates daily. So the longer they're behind, the more money it's going to cost. Mm-hmm. So by the time it gets to the foreclosure proceedings, this person has not made any payments. And we're just using worst case scenario, right? The the um, foreclosing proceeding costs money. The attorney, the sheriff, all of those people that's involved, they all cost money. So let's just say by the time it finished the foreclosure proceedings, you probably into it for one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Let's say that. Right. The bank has to come on the market and they have to get rid of these properties. So they're going to come on the market nine times out of ten way less than what that person owe because they want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So let's just say the bank come on the market at eighty thousand dollars. And the bank settles on 60000 with a buyer in a foreclosure deal. The buyer picks it up at 60000 Woohoo, the buyer happy. The original buyer um, that asked for the $100,000, imagine the bank have not collected all of their money. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So that first 60000 that that person bought it for, that goes to the bank. It goes to the first person. So gotcha. if the IRS say, yo, that person behind $60,000, we need that money. Yeah. It goes to the IRS first. Then there's nothing left over for the first lien position and or mm. myself. And so let's just say the first lien position say, yo, we gave, we gave them, you know, $80,000 and they had $20,000 worth of fees. We're only making 60. There's no money left over. Well, they're first lien position. So they get to keep it all. So mm. for me, I wouldn't be interested in being a second lien position. So you never get your money on that property ever? On this particular deal, no. You're just, you're just out of the money. You have so. to go file civil and go after them again. But if they file foreclosure and they went through that, what are they going to have? Nothing. Wow. Okay. So you still, but still do the process, still file a civil claim, try to get their wages garnished. Mm -hmm. You know, you can oh, try. So you go after that person that, mm -hmm. okay, got you. But here's the thing. Let's say that that person, say they sell the property for 60, they owe the bank, they, they owe 120. Out of 120 of that, they owe the bank 100. So the bank is in for 100 mm -hmm. with their 80 plus fees. Yes. Then you're 20,000 mm -hmm. that you want. They sell it for 60. They still owe the bank $40,000. The bank can come after them for their remaining balance if they right. wanted to. If they don't, can I come after them and get my 20000 Or when it comes to wage garnishment, it automatically defaults to pay off that other 40000 to the bank. No, they have to go after their own debt. So every okay. lien holder have to go after their own debt. Mm. So if we're going after our own debt, then we would be entitled to you know, whatever that situation is at that time. Woo. Mm -hmm. All right. The, the lesson to be learned here is <laughs> buy foreclosure properties. <laughs> That's what I got from that. Yeah. Whole um, all right. Listen, man, we can learn a whole lot more at the property challenge. This is Liz. I, I very rarely come on here and say, Hey, go do this, mm -hmm. go sign up for this, go sign up for that. I very rarely do that. Yep. I am telling you that I am not only um, not only a student, but I'm also a partner, meaning she helped me actually acquire properties that pay me every single month. OK, so Terika is doing a five day property challenge called the property challenge dot com. I need you to go to the pro y'all have not y'all have not heard me promote somebody this heavily about their product. I come get a story. We mm -hmm. learn some information and then listen, you tell the people how they connect with you. I, right. I'm out of that. Right? right. But in this scenario, I am wholeheartedly telling you all go to the property challenge.com. Okay. Not only me, she has changed so many people's lives in the real estate space. It is unbelievable. And she's good at teaching it. So she's doing it well, she's teaching it well, but she's still actually doing it and still learning the game, still learning the laws, still like she's still in the game. So go to thepropertychallenge.com. It will benefit you to make sure you go VIP. VIP, you actually get more time with Miss Tara Glenn Smith. Yes, okay? we get to talk it up, chop it up, oh, ask chop questions. It up. Yes. Like personal right. questions. Like in my That's scenario, right. this is my question for you for five days. Yes. Five days. <sighs> Listen, make sure Valuable. you go to thepropertychallenge.com. What has been, because you uh, you weren't in the teaching space forever. You just, you were just building. <laughs> yeah. And I was talking to Terika like, Terika, I know you don't like humans like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> not that she'll like humans, but she is not your extrovert. She's not like me, like, oh, let's go hang out with some people. Oh, yeah, like, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Listen, let me go look at real estate deals and I'm out of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm like, Terrica, there's so many people who need the information, not just me. Right. Because I have a relationship that. and we could have, you could have just continued to help me build my portfolio and Tiffany and mm -hmm. the other Tiffany, all these other people. Like you work mm -hmm. with B. Simone and all mm -hmm. these other people, right? Mm -hmm. You working with celebrities and stuff now. It's crazy. <laughs> um, but like we could have that personal relationship. And I, I, I asked Terrica, like, yo, let me give you to the world. Yeah, you did. And I'm grateful for you. Like, I need to give you your flowers because I'm telling you, like, I would have never, like, imagined the amount of impact 
something like this would have. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, you know, um, I can go back all the way to our original text. Like, I'm like, David, I don't care about no money. I don't care about none of that. If we're going to help people in real life, then let's do it. Like, that's what matters to me. And I think that's why, you know, so many people have success because we, we placed them first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we're big on taking care, you know, of kingdom business. So I think yeah. that's why it works. Let me tell you the fight. We just had this yesterday. And I just was like, what, Terrica? So we were, we were talking about uh, the property challenge, right? No, don't my bring goal, this up. Oh, oh, we, oh, <laughs> we, we going there. Up, no. So I'm <laughs> like, you know, like my goal, I want to get into as many as people as possible. So, you know, in my market brain, I'm like, yo, we got to run some ads because we got to get more people to know who Tarek is. And Tarek like, no. Yeah. I'm like, what? Why? He's like, yeah, I don't want it to be inauthentic. And I don't want to be like these other people that are uh, kind of in the real estate space and they're running ads and marketing. She's like, yo, I just want to build it organic. I'm like, T, there's a real fight we're having. Yeah. yeah. T, I understand you want to do it organically, but there are people who don't know you. And when, when you reach them through some sort of social media platform, they will have their life changed too. So we can't just change the lives of the people that we know. We got to find people that we don't know. And I know it's uncomfortable because, you know, she said, exactly, she said this. She said, I don't want to take away from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to interrupt that. <laughs> you blessed me, David. <laughs> I did say that. Yo, but that's, that's why I absolutely love you because yeah. it really ain't about, like, getting people to buy a ticket. Now, for me, I'm telling y'all, Buy a ticket to property shops. I don't care what Tara can talk about. I listen, I am I am gonna be that mouthpiece for her yeah. to get her out to the world. Only because I if something changes your life, you yeah. tell people about it. Yeah. Like if I watched a good movie and it was amazing and it affected me in a certain way, I have no problem telling people, listen, go invest ten dollars to go watch this movie. Make sure you get some popcorn, make sure you get some drinks, invest in yourself because this is an experience. I have no shame in doing that. So I'm telling people they need to go to the property challenge and just, sign up right now. You just sold me on the movies, bro. <laughs> like that old expensive popcorn, but you know, it's the experience, you know? Yeah. I, like I want that. you to have the same experience as I had. Yes. yes, And, yes, I, and I knew it was real. This is when I knew it was real. And this is when I was like, I'm like all in with being like the person who blows the trumpet shouting <laughs> Terika's name. We go to uh, the first, it might have been like the first gathering mm-hmm. of the people in our circle. Mm-hmm. And very casually, uh, Derek is telling me, he said, yo, 70% of the people in the property, cha- people that are in the, uh, the inner circle actually have an investment property. Yes. And I said, that is unbelievable. Yeah. Nobody has that high, like in any mastermind, you don't get yeah. 70% results. Yeah. 50, maybe 35 more common. Because everybody ain't going to do the work. That's right. But right? shout out to our inner circle. I mean, they are in. Like, they understand. Like, we started. Like, the program works when you work it. And so they have been working. They've been doing 100%. everything we've said. And because of it, you know, um, their their um, works have been blessed. Like, mm-hmm. that's what happens when you do it right, you know. And so I'm excited for them. Yeah. I'm and as of now, them. you can't even skip straight to the inner circle. You have to go through the property. You channel. have to. And that was one thing that Terika made very clear. She's like, yo, if somebody isn't going to follow. And they, oh, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> there's 70 percent. OK, here I, I, it's making sense now. Terika said, yo, if you're not going to um, be diligent enough to sit down for five hours over a week to understand real estate. If you get in the inner circle, you just bypass that and you get in the inner circle, you're not going to do the work anyway. And you're going to be all mad. We both waste each other's time. That's right. So go to the, if you you ever want to get close and you want to be in Terrica's inner circle, having access to these deals, things of that nature. Because on the 28 unit, um, me being in the inner circle, I had access to get <laughs> you know, part of that. Okay. So uh, being in the inner circle, there's a bunch of people that uh, also they're on the 60 unit property. It's just mm-hmm. amazing things happening. So go to the, the property challenge.com. Okay. This is uh 
This is a decision that will change your life. You want to stop hustling, making money. Core sales are slowing down. We don't know what's going on with influencers. Instagram is controlling the algorithm. So if you're building something online, who knows who's going to see it? Mm-hmm. When, Insta- when, when Mark Zuckerberg decides <laughs> that people can see your stuff, he will turn the button and he will make sure people see your stuff. But until then, you are going to be making content and wondering why people are not watching it. But this is one thing you can do. You ain't got to be a celebrity. You ain't got to be no star. You ain't got to right. be articulate. You ain't got to be able to speak. You ain't got to have no sales skills. You just have to be able to follow directions. That's it. And Terika is the leader that you want to follow. Okay. So the property challenge.com. If it's open right now, congratulations, you're blessed. If not, if it's a wait list, sign up for the wait list because another property challenge will be coming up soon. Okay. So the property challenge.com. Um, Terika, thank you. Thank you. I know for you gotta get to me. the I airport. Yes, I do. You got any, any 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 closing words for us? Yeah, go to thepropertychallenge.com. See, look, Terika yeah. promoting now. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Terika's here. She's a believer. And it's so dope because you get more excited when you get more uh, students that's getting right. results. So That's right. I that's get excited dope. over the results for sure. But that's the kind of stuff we talk about. So yeah. listen, man, thepropertychallenge.com. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You need to have your whole family in the property challenge because this right. is where like legacy begins with you, okay? So make sure you follow Terika on Instagram at female real estate guru spelled just how it sounds female real estate guru and go to the property challenge.com let's go out of here peace we out we out we got my phone it's 11